So I was on the Facebook this morning, and they had one of my favorite songs from Rocco's Modern Life on there. And it's the one where it's, you've got to R-E-C-Y-C-L-E, recycle, C-O-N-S-C-R-V-E, conserve, don't you P-O-L-O-U-T-E, the river score, the rivers seas. I don't remember that one. Oh, don't you P-O-L-O-U-T-E, the pollute the river sky or see a rush you're gonna get what you deserve what i got dark real quick <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's rocco's modern life did mess around with conservation dude ladies and gentlemen presenting the newest comic duo davis a dabbler in many disciplines with a voice that can soothe and persuade mike a fanatical specialist with a mouth like a bullhorn fueled by strong opinions and a compulsion to share them with microphones and comics in hand they are jacks of trades <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome to Drinking Issues. I'm Mike. And I'm Davis. On Drinking Issues, we read a current comic book arc and discuss it as it comes out. So, uh, if anybody was part of our last arc, we were doing Champions. Ah, Championess. Uh, if you liked it, awesome. We didn't. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, we, we liked the beginning. I liked a couple issues. The beginning that was number, strong. That number two is still one of my favorite issues of the year so far. Really? I really enjoyed it. I had oh, a lot of fun with it. Was it technically last year? Yeah, it was technically last year. Fine. It was one, it was one of my favorite issues that I've read in a while. Um, but that arc's over. We're on to a new arc. We are doing Images Plastic. It is a mini series. just came out. Uh, so let's go through the stats real quick. Like I said, the publisher is Image. And uh, it is produced by 12 Gauge Comics, which is the smaller indie label. Uh, so the material is basically owned by 12 Gauge, but Image is doing the publishing and distribution mm -hmm. to kind of reach a wider audience. Image does a lot of creator-owned stuff. So it allows them to get a little bit of, of notoriety and help in spreading it out. But yeah, the and, creator and still gets to keep the intellectual property. Yeah, and make it so we have more comics to read. Yeah, exactly. Because this is going to be a... Uh... It's definitely a palate cleanser compared to um, uh, Championess. It's it's a little different. Uh, so this one is coming out from April 2017th through August 2017th. It's just a five-issue mini. Uh, I It may continue later after that, after a, a hiatus. I don't know. Um, but right now, all that's been you know, solicited is this five-issue story. No one's made any mention of another arc coming or another season, quote-unquote, mm -hmm. which Image likes to do. Um Creators. I'm going to read the creators as the book reads them. Or actually, Davis, you read them and I'll explain um, who they are and what they've done. Doug Pottymouth Wagner. Daniel. He, wait, up. Doug Pottymouth Wagner. He is the managing editor of 12 Gauge. Uh, he's worked on a lot of 12 Gauge titles, a couple image in DC, but nothing really big name. Daniel Scribbles Hilliard. Yeah, he's our artist. He's pretty much worked exclusively on 12-gauge titles. Laura Cat Lady Martin. She's our colorist. She's worked on Wildstorm, both the original image and the first iteration of DC. Uh, she did some astonishing X-Men work in the early 2000s, and she colored for Civil War Frontlines, which is one of my favorite supplementals of that event. Ed Comic Sans Dukeshire. He's done work on Big Hero 6, uh, Hulk, when the Red Hulk was really prominent. Uh, and Grant Morrison's Klaus, which is a graphic novel reimagining Santa. And Andrew Biker Dust Robinson. Yeah, he's doing the covers for this issue. He's done pretty much covers for everyone. You've, If you've paid attention to any variant covers in the last five years, you've seen a couple of his his pieces. Speaking of, uh, sp speaking of variant covers, though, yep. um, uh, uh, yeah. I just noticed, okay. as you brought it up, Doug... Potty Mouth Wagner, mm -hmm. and my cover, there's a man's head in a jar, or in a plastic bag, and it says Potty Mouth. Yes, the uh, variant covers, e each one has a head in a bag, and each bag has the nickname written on it. I think I might have to get all of them now, that I started yeah. with the first one. Yeah, Davis accidentally got the, the variant cover. It's not a bad, it's a great cover, it's really fun. Um... But it's it's kind of interesting to see the the difference. Mine mine's a very traditional, you know, kind of comic book cover. Mm -hmm. And Davis is it's literally a head in a bag with viscera Wait. shoved in its mouth. Well, no, 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 not viscera shoved in its mouth. It's tongue missing inside the bag, 
and then the tongue is actually on the outside with a fork in it. Oh, okay. I didn't even see. Oh, good lord. Okay. Yeah. That Jesus. Yeah. He has nothing to do with this one. Anyway, the uh, the big noteworthy thing about this is that, except for the colorist and the cover artist, uh, and I, I guess the letterer, you know, the, the the two big creative drivers, the writer and the artist. Um, they're not really very prominent or very well known, so it's kind of I've never heard of them. You know, so it, it's for me at least, and and probably probably for a lot of readers, it's their first real uh, introduction to these. So it, let's jump right in. Uh, the scene opens and we see a car sitting on the side of a Louisiana roadway with cypress a, trees in the background and a dead possum. Well, I mean, well, Mike, shouldn't we? talk about the main point of drinking issues before we start this issue oh that's right we forgot the alcohols how how can wow. I, I mean i've been drinking and i just forgot to talk about it me, me too me so too. anyway like we said um this book takes place in louisiana so i think that really impacted both davis and my um not at all choice. it impacted me, my choice me not at all not at all davis Partially. just happened to get a louisiana beer oh yes 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 i uh what you got davis so this this issue uh plastic I got the Rebirth Pale Ale out of the Nola Brewery. Um, Because, well, it's a Rebirth. It is a brand new series that we're doing right now. It is a complete deviation from uh, Champions, where it was these, you know, uh, somewhat old superhero, new superhero proxies happening. So this is new. It's a complete rebirth of what we're doing with this. Okay, that makes sense. That works. Uh, I picked up uh, LA31's Beer Pale. It's their pale ale from Bayou Tesh Brewing. Mm -hmm. Out in Arneville, Louisiana. Yeah, out, out in the, the Louisiana swamps. Um, this takes place in, in what looks to be southern Louisiana. I, it's definitely Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, with the cypress trees and the water and everything uh, we see in the issue. And, uh, and the lack of good donuts. Yeah, look, looks to be pretty... Well, I don't, I don't know. There's some pretty bomb-ass donuts in the Lafayette region, so... That's true. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, it, it is a southern brewery, and on the cover is this badass-looking dude fighting an alligator, and um, is there's, he, there's is, a lot isn't of... He, isn't he brandishing a knife as well? Yeah. Uh, I pretty much got this because this is the closest violent image on a beer I could find to what we're going to see in this issue. Oh, Absolutely. And that's after the after LA thirty one rebranded all of their beers. Yeah. Too. I'm like, uh, they're they're all kind of. Uh, we're talking about beer right now instead of comic books, but the labels actually look kind of comic booky. Yeah, they look, they, like, they they look like, like comic these, panels. Right. Like or these, like covers almost. Right. Yeah. They they look like these really just uh very pulp novel heavy. Yeah. The the noir, like, the noir one looks kind of like a, uh, isn't it like a, like a werewolf about to attack a guy in a P-Rogue? Yeah, yeah. Or like, or, or actually, I think it's... Uh, it's it's a, the Rougarou. It's but... a swamp cat. Oh, I thought it was a Rougarou. No, it's a swamp cat because uh, they actually do have panthers out in some of the yeah, swamps yeah, yeah, around yeah, here yeah. and whatnot. Oh, but they got that. There's one where it's it looks like a giant like crawfish attacking a town like Mars Attack style. They're all, they all look wonderful and pulpy. Oh, yeah. Okay, sweet. So anyway, now we've got the alcohol over. Back to the, the book. Scene opens, car sitting on the side of Louisiana of a road. And a man says, Virginia. But yep. there's a little bit of a... Yeah, the focal point of the panel is the 70s sedan that's really a-rockin'. And you know the rules. When the van's knock, When the van's a-rockin', we're having sex. I mean, yeah, but... That's from that 70s show. That's, okay. That was yeah, I, was, I, was, I imagine that's a great t-shirt somewhere. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, we get this scene of this sedan just rocking back and forth as someone's clearly having sex mm -hmm. to the point of the Titanic hand on the window. I was about to scene. say, yeah. The, the I, I really like that little touch, the hand the hand on the foggy window. Uh, a man steps out of the vehicle who looks uh, aggressively like Willem Dafoe. Yes. Uh, he. Just, I'm not against it. I'm uh, just he, saying. He looks like a Willem Dafoe combined with the creepiness of old Christopher Walken. Like, older Christopher Walken. Like, well, technically young Christopher Walken. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, young Christopher Walken meets William, Willem Dafoe. Yes. Um, and he steps out to pee, you know, the well, classic he, he, well, post-coital urination. Right, and he's just talking to this woman. Yes, yes, we're not. We're not. She's not really saying anything. She's yeah. not saying anything back. He's just telling her. Well, she's in the car, so I mean, right. we, don't, we only really, he's outside, so we only really get to hear him. Mm. Um, 
They make a plan to go find a corner store, get some donuts, and maybe some supplies. Yeah. You know? well, well, uh, he makes a passing comment about a new cleaning brush. Yes. Well, and plus, he has to get, you know, he has to get some jelly, some, you know, petroleum jelly, because that's going to help, you know, lube things up. And I don't know about you, sir, but I've never you know, I've never used an oil-based product for um, a sexual lubricant. I have not either. I heard that's not advised. I think it isn't anymore. I, I, I think, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how... I, I got nothing on this. I'm I'm gonna walk away from the lubricant comment. My mom listens to this sometimes. <laughs> All so, right. corner store. He goes to grab his supplies. He grabs some donuts, some a, beer, a six pack, his petroleum jelly, waterproof matches. Yeah, I don't. That might that might I be a check off gun. I don't know. I don't, and a yeah, cleaning brush. Yeah, it might be. It, yeah. Uh, he actually makes a comment to the guy behind the counter. He's like, "Hey, do you have a softer one?" Nope. Sorry, pal. Just a. Rough bristle toilet cleaning brush, like the cheap one you can find at the Dollar Tree. Mm-hmm. So for a less than a dollar. Yeah. So he's getting checked out. He's looking at some magazines. Huh? Maybe a romantic trip to Rome will be nice. Mm-hmm. Steps outside and he finds three guys around his car and they're hitting on this woman in the front seat. That we Virginia. Can see they're hitting the on shoulder. Virginia. Yeah, I know. Um, so that, this fr- is a bad move. So <clears throat> the man says, "If you're game, sorry, <clears throat> getting." <clears throat> Make it AM. okay. Here, here's the thing. AM. This this man looks like he. I I I apologize to anybody who did attend this university, but this man looks like the worst stereotype of an LSU frat boy. Absolutely, absolutely. I was gonna say Auburn just because he's wearing uh, orange, but it's Louisiana. Good point. So I I, I have to go LSU. I <laughs> love the team. I love the school. I gotta go LSU on this one because there's some shit people that go to all schools. With a mouth like that, you could suck the stain off a two by four. <laughs> if you're game, I'm sporting lumber. And then a plastic bag goes over his head. Yeah, and um, I love this moment. This fight scene ensues like a Jason Bourne, Jack Reacher, you know, uh, Taken level fight scene. Yes, but there's no movie that would be this graphic. No, no. Uh, and. I don't know. Logan was pretty, but even then, not that bad. Logan no. wasn't that bad. No, no. He he so, yeah. he, he puts he threw- the bag over a dude's head, kicks another dude to where he shatters his knee. Yeah, like kicks his knee inside. Knee. Shatters ways. his leg at the knee. Chicken leg style. Then he sw- the dude while his head is still in the bag swings it around and cracks the other guy in the head with the other guy's head. Yeah, as per the classic meme, he literally beat a motherfucker with another motherfucker. Yes, absolutely. And then this proceeds to just just joint by joint break he, these people he's fucking down. People. Uh, w- w- one of the guys, you know, the guy gets his knee kicked in. He calls out, you balloon fucking pervert, and pulls a gun out saying, Jesus, man, what the fuck is wrong with you? To where our protagonist responds, Virginia doesn't like to hear the Lord's name in vain. He then puts the gun against the car. Like he grabs it real quick. But instead of disarming him, he pins the gun against the car and punches the guy's hand while his fingers are still wrapped around the barrel. Break, uh, barrel uh, the, the, the grip. Mm-hmm. And inside the finger guard. Breaking everything. Breaking all of his fingers in brutal fashion. Just like de- hanging off by flesh bits. Ugh. Which it seems to be a little extra. But and still. then he rips his ear off. Yeah, by slamming his, car into the, his face into the, the car window. He then goes back to the original guy, the one who was talking shit to Virginia, the one who got the plastic bag on his head, grabs him by the junk and the plastic bag, slams him to the ground, and then proceeds to shove the previously purchased cleaning brush in his mouth. Yeah, um, for lack of a better term, mouth fucking him with the brush, which is exactly the thing he said to Virginia in the first place, was about oral sex. Yeah. So he punishes him with a very graphic mm-hmm. representation of that by showing a, then, a, a pain, a, like a sharp, I guess sharp-ish. It's a cleaning brush. It's not very pleasant. Mm-mm. This phallic object into his mouth. And then he, we, we see he has this very just possessed, mean look on his eyes. Yeah. And then snap. He's yeah. out. He sees Virginia. He's calm. He's out of he's out of his berserker barrage yeah, Hulk at, rage mode. At that point, he's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I got carried away. My my apolo-. He's like apologizing to these guys who, for all intents and purposes, should be dead. Yes, they might they might be dead. Yeah, clearly, they one might of be them dead. might be dead. We don't know. Might be dead. Um, and then he gets back in the car with the beer and the donuts and the lube, and we see Virginia. We 
You see Virginia in, in most of her splendor. Her, her mouth is just wide open just in agape. just surprise. Her, just an agape mouth. An agape mouth. And her shoulders are a little weird. They're kind of puffy. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, uh, and, uh, well, we find out why Virginia hasn't said anything and why he needs petroleum jelly and why there's a cleaning brush. I don't want I, I both you and I are just de- delaying saying this right now, but one, mm-hmm. two, three. She's a blow up doll. She's a sex doll. Yeah, yeah. She's a sex doll. Virginia is a sex doll. The only reason I caveat blow up doll is because modern day we have those real doll things. Yeah, and she is clearly blown up. All right, val- valid yeah. argument. Valid her her argument. head and is is definitely hard plastic, but you could see. The like inflatable joints of mm-hmm. a blow up toy. Um, so yeah, Virginia is a blow up sex doll. Yes. So we jump to a Louisiana mansion. All of a sudden, plastic bag guy runs into a room, mm-hmm. which now you can tell this is a Louisiana mansion because there's a stuffed gator head on the wall. In yeah. which I don't know about you, you don't you don't hang it's, gator heads on the wall, but that's yeah. That, no, that's I, just, let's say that's when, just whom when, I know. When, when, when you have a crocodilian head on a wall. You are in Africa, Australia, or Louisiana, uh, maybe on the Amazon. Uh, crocodilian. Florida-ish. Florida. I, I, I yes. do Florida too, but that's it. Well, there, well there's, 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 no, there's no crocodiles in Louisiana though. I don't know. No, crocodilian is the family. Nah, there we go. It's it, it's, it's the, 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 the big group. Mm-hmm. And then they fall in separate categories, different kinds of crocodiles and the American alligator. Yeah, well, we, we, we had our conversation about mammals earlier. It's all yeah. Good. It's fine. Uh, so, so this, 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 first of all, first of all, how is this guy not fucking dead? I don't. I feel like you can cause enough damage to the soft palate and throat. With that cleaning brush, because it it wasn't like a gentle scrubbing. He was ramming it down. Like, how do you just not break, you know, one of the soft bones or, or crush his larynx or anything like that? Yeah, like, how... exactly. Like, or, or, or go so far back, you're just, yeah. you know, poking spinal cord. It's comics, though, so mm. he's a lot. He runs in and immediately gets reprimanded by his grizzled father. Who has, who picks up what looks like, I, I've never seen anything, it, it looks like a tiny Golf club combined with a it's, field it's hockey like a mallet. gold walking stick. Yeah, but um, it doesn't look long enough to be a walking stick. But he's he he's awesome looking. He's he's got this. He looks like a war vet. Mm-hmm. He's got like 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 if you were gonna do a twenty years from now Frank Castle Punisher story. Yeah, well he's he's got he's got the scar yeah. over this, his this lip. This short, that didn't hear this properly. shorn shorn gray hair Heal like a, like a military vet. He's got the lip scar. He's got a scalp scar. Mm-hmm. Strong physique. Um. Now, the father mentions that his son needs to learn some discipline and self-restraint, which, oh, wow, you raised a spoiled rich brat. Of course he does. Absolutely. Uh, so he, That first-generation new money is always horrible. Yeah. His son needs to learn some discipline, but the guy that beat him up also needs to be dealt with. Uh, typical my dad's going to sue you fashion. Uh, just like a LSU. Frat boy. Frat boy. Yeah. Um, so he sends one of his goons to go kidnap the protagonist. And after being knocked out, our protagonist wakes up tied to a chair. Virginia's hung up in the middle of this room as the goons and a local cop taunt him. Now, the uh, the taunting's pretty weird. Right, like the guy's like, whoo, man, huh, there's no way we're getting rid of this uh, doll. This looks great. I mean, like, I mean, hmm, this is so lifelike. Oh, this is great. Oh, yeah. Your girlfriend says she sure does like a man in uniform. <laughs> I don't want... Okay. No. No. We can just caveat. No. And just say, none of us want to... He, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to... I, I have a point about the doll, but I'll get back to it later. Uh, when we do No it. man wants to use another man's sex doll. No, absolutely not. That's that's Absolutely gross. not. Mm-mm. Uh, but what's really cool is our protagonist immediately starts Jason Bourning the room, for lack of a better... Like, I'm, I, I keep, I'm going to keep using this reference because... It, it it's it's like that sleeper agent spy almost. Absolutely, because because he's he, he's looking around. It's like all right. We, that, well, we get this, we, first we get the fight scene where he just suddenly becomes a fucking badass, right? And and not that he didn't look, he, he wasn't like a fat or out of shape or anything like that. But he didn't look like he was gonna kick the shit out of anybody. And he just suddenly starts destroying people mm-hmm. easily. And then now he starts taking stock of the room around him. He's right. like, okay, look at the sunlight. We're facing east. Oh, we're over water. 
Gotcha. Huh, this guy's name's Jim. This guy's name is Thomas. His tongue is licking my Virginia right now. Ew. Yeah, so so he, he starts taking notes of everything that's going to happen. And that's when uh, Daddy walks in. Mm-hmm. Now, he gives us his name. Victor. No, no, no. I'm not talking oh. about the dad. The dad is Thaddeus Bellevue. Bellevue. And he's, he gives us the protagonist's name, which is Victor. Victor. Uh, now... We finally start getting a little bit of information about Victor. Up until this point, we don't know his name. We don't know anything about him. We just we just know that he loves Virginia and that he can kick the shit out of people. And he can. And that he believes that Virginia's favorite donut is Creamfield, which is really gross. After he just finished having sex with her. Uh, So, yeah, Victor was a... 10,000 square feet. Quote, unquote, government spook Mm -hmm. for 10 years and then just dropped off the radar. Two years ago. Yeah. So Thaddeus normally would kill him for laying a hand on the sun, but he's got use for this particular skill set. So he's going to hold Virginia hostage while Victor takes care of something for him. Victor gets cracked in the head again. Wakes up in his car. And he's in front of a house where the mailbox says Pratchett. Last name. Uh, And he looks at his dash and he finds a note. If they see sunrise, Virginia doesn't. Victor gets out of his car, kind of, a little conviction goes, for Virginia. And that's issue one. End of the issue. So, uh... So let's talk about some themes happening on right now. Um, I do believe the, I, the, the, the concept of the phantom limb uh, plays heavily into Victor's role as far as... I'm just making things up right now. I'm yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, I It's I issue a, one. It's issue one. Like, what, yeah. what most else can we talk about right well, now with well, issue one? Well, the point of issue one is it's supposed to catch your attention. Mm-hmm. And it does that. It absolutely... Um, I'll it, give it that. Well, it's it, it does the two things that always catch a... I'm being, I'm being stereotypical. It has... At least one of the two things that, or three things that catches any straight white cisgender male's attention. It's either violence, titties, or cars. Now, the car's not that cool. The car's not that cool. There's not really titties, but there's a lot of violence to make up for it. Yeah. But it, it, it kind of deals with some of the, the, the sexual, I don't want to say deviance or depravity, but we'll, we'll get back to that. Um, definitely is a strong open. It. Answers a couple questions, but posits way more. Oh, as it should. I mean, that's well, that's you don't want to you don't want to give everything away in the first. Yeah, no, you know, we we you don't barely like know who our main character is. Um, I have a question about Virginia, though. Do do you get the sense that more is going on with the doll than we think? You mean like she's really filled with cocaine super serum? No, I was going to say that she's really real. No. Because cause here's my thing. I, I'm, I'm reading this. I understand why three 20-something-year-old kids would make fun of a guy for having sex with a sex doll. I don't understand why three 20-something-year-old kids would hang around the car and one of them would talk lustfully to a sex doll. Well, I mean, maybe they didn't. I'm think it, like, my like, reality like that was nobody, they didn't recognize it was a sex. Doll. Nobody outright. Yeah, they did because the guy yells "balloon fucking pervert." Uh, maybe that was after the fact. What's the what what what, I, what I'm like? I'm trying to figure it out here. It, I feel like there might be a reveal later on that Virginia's been real the whole time, and this is just how Victor's fucked up mind sees the world. Because they, they they don't explicitly reference it like a sex doll at all times, and I I I see that once he deals with Thaddeus, maybe they're doing it for his benefit, just to like not not patronize him, right? You know, like let's meet him on his level and but, but just it doesn't quite sit right. I, I feel like there might be something more. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just maybe, maybe it's maybe it's just a sex doll. Exactly. But I think there might be more at some point. Um, well, that'd be fun. But w- without a lot of, of meat to the issue, uh, let's jump right to the rating on this one. Do you want to okay. go first or should I? Uh, I'll go first. Okay. What you got for it? Uh, eight. Really? Yeah. Okay. I uh, Again, it starts off strong. It answers a couple of questions like, okay, who's this? 
Okay, we know she's a sex doll. And it prompts him into, okay, cool. Time for um uh, time to get this show on the road. We meet in the middle. Well, not in the middle. We meet exactly at the same point, actually. My yeah. Eight? I give it an eight. Awesome. I thought it was a strong opening. We get Ooh, and I'm actually gonna keep track of what I rate things this time. So nice. so so it's not like the end of the last one where I just got belligerent and said I don't even care anymore about life. <laughs> I mean, if it, if it turns as bad as Champions, I don't. I vaguely, you can do it again. I, I really don't remember recording that much. It was it was it was a rough day. It was a lot of alcohol, really but um, yeah, alcohol. strong opening, uh, introduction of the characters and setting. Um, I think they did a good job of that. It's, just, it's a little bit of a tease, but not a lot of information. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, we don't even learn the character's name till the end of the issue, in the last couple pages. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot of mystery to unravel that they've set up here. Uh, I like that there's no real heroes. Like, our protagonist is just, <clears throat> not even less. Like, he's just differently shitty. I mean, the well, we don't, well, that's the thing. We don't, the protagonist hasn't really done anything wrong. I don't know. Okay. I, I'm going to argue that point entirely. The protagonist well, okay, we, assaulted violently three men because they made a, like, that level of violence is not... John People. Rambo didn't mean to attack everyone, but the cops made him yeah. do it. They drew first blood. I'm just saying, that level of violence is not appropriate for somebody catcalling an actual woman. You know, so even in his mind where he thinks it's an actual woman, okay, that I'll level that of violence one. is aggressive. You know, it, it, so so he... And he's going to do some fucked up stuff. We assume. Yeah. Well, looking at the sneak peek, yeah. Uh, the pacing kept me engaged. Uh, there's a lot of little details hidden and, and little, little things in the dialogue, like like the Titanic hand mm-hmm. or like, like, like these, these little Easter eggs to find as you go through. Um, the art's a little stylized, but not terribly. I uh, I really love the art on this one. Yeah, um, it, it's very expressive. Well, this uh, this style that we're dealing with, um, it's not the 90s comic book where you know, it's just like that. It is very stylized. You, there's definitely a lot of expression you can see on their faces. But the the line work and the coloring really gets me on this one because it's it's just it's I don't want to say it's perfectly done. Uh, it, it reminds me a little bit. of... It's perfectly done for the story. It, it reminds me I a little think of a bit better of way a, a story. Uh, less anime, less comic hero, exaggerated Umberto Ramos that we have with Champions. Okay, I, I can kind of see that. To where it, it's it's more grounded. It's not as much like this. Oh, we have to have these crazy sharp angles on things because well, she's Viv Vision. Yeah. Um. Uh, so it's it, it's grounded. It's more grounded. Yeah, I, I think it really fits the story well. Um. Odd point, but it struck to me, the paper quality. What do you mean? Just feel how thick the page is. Oh, um. I was gonna say the just the fact that there are these huge thick white border lines on everything. So comparing it to some of the other stuff that we've read where it's... It's, the, it's, a, lot, the, it's a lot of mashing well, up. Well, the panel the panel literally goes to the edge of the page and someone's elbow is cut off, but you still see it. This is a completely structured, everything fits within these grid lines in the center of the page. It, it's easy to read visually. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, the paper quality, it's, it's a very good paper stock, which I like. Because uh, you, you get a lot of these monthly issues and... Some of them feel real flimsy. Feels like feels like um, uh, Motel Six toilet paper. Exactly. Uh, and uh, what's cool about it is it's not really in my normal wheelhouse, uh, sir. Yeah. This isn't in. I don't think this is in a lot of people's wheelhouse. I'm not picking this up off the shelf on a whim, like just because I see the cover. Uh, oh, I would. My my cover absolutely. Head in the bag. See, say no, potty I, mouth on it. I absolutely, absolutely would not for that. Um, but you know it's. Definitely something I wouldn't go near. Um, I'd probably be a little apprehensive if it was like an ongoing, ongoing mm-hmm. to pick it up. But since it's a mini, I think it's yeah, it, it, it's a five issue investment. It's right. it's real easy to jump on board. It's going to be three ninety nine an issue. That's not that's still not you bad. know you, you're looking at twenty something dollars when it's all said and done. Yeah, you know it, it's it's not bad. I'm 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 excited to see where it goes. Uh, at the very least, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm a. I'm at, the, a at the very least, I'm an American male. I like fight scenes. I mean, at 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 the very least, we're going to get this like weird Tarantino influenced 
weird. If you start licking her foot, then it's like, oh yeah, no, this is totally a Tarantino. Yeah, Taran- it's gonna Quentin be a Tarantino odd. is really Wagner. Yeah, type of thing. Okay, so that puts us both at an eight. Yep. I'm excited for the next issue. Excited to see how this story evolves. Same here. Uh, with nothing else to add. Thanks for listening. You know where to find us. Jacksoftradespodcast.com. Facebook.com slash Jacks Trades Pod. At Jacks Trades Pod on Instagram and Twitter. iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. Please go ahead, write us reviews, share with your friends. You know, everything helps. We appreciate all of it. Any questions, comments, find us on any of those social media outlets. I'm sure there's a comment section somewhere hidden on the website, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Y'all, y'all just tell me to read stuff and record stuff. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, but again, thank you all for listening. I'm Mike. I'm Davis. Have a good one. Adios.